I get hundreds of questions asked of me every single day, but every now and again, I get a question that I especially enjoy because it's something that I've contemplated for literally years. I received this comment under a video that I released about maybe two years ago, and the video discusses fasting and overeating and how they each impact our mitochondria. Anyway, the question was semi-related to the topic, but really touched on a more applicable aspect of muscle physiology. The comment coming from Dijek, excuse the pronunciation, uh, thank you for your thoughtfulness, the study that you were able to link, and the general nature of the question. Like I commented, I really enjoyed this one. So the comment asks about having an abundance of nutrients to build muscle with some more specifics on mitochondria. So we'll discuss that too. So Dijek mentioned this study that showed a significant difference in the ability to build muscle if you are consuming more food. Take this data, for example. So which shows the amount of muscle gained following the same resistance training regimen, but consuming more food in one group versus another. Group one and group two both gained muscle. However, group one, the group that consumed 35% more calorically dense foods, experienced more muscle gain, about double. Yes, protein was the same in both groups, since I know that's an incoming question. However, what you'll also notice is the fact that more body fat was gained in group one as well. So that raises this question. What is the optimal calorie surplus, food surplus, to maximize muscle growth, minimize fat gain, and from a health standpoint, minimize oxidative stress? If you're confused about where oxidative stress came from, uh, it's because of the video that Dijek commented on. Uh, in that video, I mentioned that if food intake exceeds the mitochondria's ability to generate cellular energy, known as ATP, then mitochondria generate more reactive oxygen species, which are damaging molecules that tear at the integrity of the cell, like, you know, muscle cells. As a matter of fact, I'll let my past me explain what's going on inside your mitochondria. Now, if supply is so great and demand is not great enough, so demand is small and supply is high, then you have a high degree of NADH, you have high amounts of FADH, and they go through the same process, right? Donating electrons, it's going through this electron transport chain. But the problem is that because you're getting so much pumping of hydrogen out and you're not getting enough of this drive to generate ATP because you have enough ATP. You don't need more ATP. So you get a lot of protons that build up out here, but there's no drive through a metabolic demand right here through these reactions that would happen, enzymatic reactions and whatnot. So the protons are staying up here because there's only a small amount still coming through here to generate ATP relative to the amount of supply that there is. So as such, what happens is you have a proton, you have protons and electrons that start to leak. So instead of staying where they should be going, where they, they normally would be, for example, the electrons, instead of being pushed from one complex to another complex, they end up slipping, meaning that there's so much pressure building up kind of if you want to think about like chemical pressure uh think of it like a like a hose almost that the water is coming in this way and the opening is only so big but the pressure keeps building on this side eventually wherever there are weaknesses in these complexes you're going to get slipping of these electrons they're going to start bouncing all over the place instead of going to their respective spot because the respective spot is taken by another electron because there's no pulling, there's no, there's no release through the ATP synthase. So these electrons start to slip kind of like a hose that has a weak point and you start having a, a, a bit of water that starts poking out of the side and then another leak coming out of another side. And it builds and builds and builds to the point where all these electrons are starting to, to freely be released from this electron transport chain or not go to the electron transport chain and it starts generating 
reactive oxygen species. Essentially, if the cellular intake of nutrients is too high from overconsumption that leads to overall fat gain, and the cell doesn't need to generate more ATP, so that's cellular energy, then the mitochondria generate ROS, or ROS molecules, which increase oxidative stress within the cells. Clearly, oxidative stress and mass damage to the cells is unhealthy. So that's the third component, minimizing oxidative stress. So we know that eating more than your body needs to maintain weight is imperative for optimal muscle growth. We see that evidenced in part by the study mentioned beforehand. Why? Because protein synthesis that occurs within the muscle cells, the myocytes, is dependent on ATP. It's dependent due to two reasons, tRNA aminoacylation and guanosine triphosphate regeneration. Without going to too much molecular biology, when proteins are produced in your cells, like muscle cells, the cell is dependent on ribosomes, special protein factories that literally stitch amino acids together into chains. The amino acids are supplied through a molecule known as transfer RNA, or tRNA. So transfer RNA are bound to amino acids, and that process requires ATP. Then the tRNA plus the attached amino acid are attached to by ribosomes, and the ribosome then attaches the amino acid to the protein chain. Then the ribosome ejects the tRNA. Some of these processes are dependent on another energy molecule in the cell, not ATP, but GTP. And since ATP can be converted to GTP, they are dependent on one another. High levels of ATP allow protein synthesis a full pool of GTP. As a side note, I always imagine tRNA being kicked off the ribosome to sound kind of anticlimactic, like uh, or something along those lines. Just imagine that sound occurring in your cells over and over. And just like the ejection of this tRNA out of the ribosome. Okay, maybe you can't relate. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Be cool, Nick. Be cool. Anyway, all in all, protein synthesis is highly reliant on cellular energy. But if the cell is maxed out, then there is no use for more energy. Yet the cell is being gifted with an excess of nutrients, which is either stored, if it can, or sends into the mitochondrion for the generation of energy. It's here that there's this tug of war between supply and demand that occurs, leading electrons donated by the excess nutrients to generate reactive oxygen species and ultimately oxidative stress. So where does that leave us on an answer? What's the sweet spot? The answer is, I don't know. Nor does any researcher, if I had to bet, because it's not a topic of great investigation to help out bodybuilders be as optimal as possible. However, I can give you an educated guess. I think that the sweet spot is between 100 and 300 calories over your maintenance calories. Meaning, if you maintain your weight at 2,000 calories, you should be consuming 2,100 or 2,300 calories a day or somewhere in there. This way, you minimize fat gain. A little is inevitable, unfortunately, yet also supply your cells with sufficient nutrients to maximize protein synthesis. This, of course, assumes that you are also resistance training effectively. And resistance training, exercise as a whole, has the added benefit of increasing our cellular antioxidant molecules like glutathione. So even if there's a small increase in oxidative stress due to the aforementioned mechanisms, your cells might be able to buffer it with the boost in antioxidant capacity. Additionally, consider that protein synthesis is ramped up with resistance training. So a good portion of that excess energy is then rerouted to the musculature for energy to propel the protein synthesis machinery, you know, the ribosomes, to form new muscle proteins. So that's the answer and the mechanisms with a sprinkle of science. How about learning much more about muscle growth and body composition though? Well, I've got you covered. Check out my linked video. It's a doozy.